Hello YouTube, another video, another car. Today we're gonna talk about the E46. In this video, we're gonna say the reason why the E46 is so famous in drifting and racing, what it's like to drive an E46, how does it look from outside and inside, the problem that you're gonna face with the engine and anything else in the car, so stay tuned. Good morning YouTube, we're in Mumsor Beach today, this is what we're going to have today, the E46 BMW 2001 330Ci. Now sorry for the wind noise first of all, uh, it's a little bit windy today which is good, the weather is changing. Now this car has been driven for 180,000 km and yet it still look clean. Uh, the only thing that we did on this car was mainly just the rims, we changed the rims to the M320 inch, we painted them black. Uh, other than that, we did not do anything else. The car is still stuck as everything. How does the car look like? The car looks like heaven. Guys, it's a 20 years old car, but it still looks sporty. It's still competing with the cars that we have nowadays. It's not outdated. If that was the question, it's not even close to be outdated. The car looks sexy as hell. Now, let's check the interior. So, uh, sorry for that. This is how the interior looks like. Pretty clean, pretty smooth. And by the way, the interior is also stock. Now, the good thing about this car that yes, it's a coupe, but the chassis used in the car is actually the same chassis that used as a sedan. So, you have plenty of space back there. You can sit three people. Like, really good. And you know what? Let's just try. Ah. It's not so hard to get in. And here's the door. Here's the chair. I'm perfectly fine. And I'm a big guy. Leaving the car is actually, I think, the hardest place. Yeah. But we did leave. So this is the passenger seat. Now, let's see the driver's seat. The driver's seat is looked as clean as the other side, even though it has been used a lot. But yeah, there is no engine lights, there is nothing. The car is really, really in a good shape. If you get, if you take good care of those cars, like you maintain, you do the service regularly, the car will stay forever with you. We're gonna check the bonnet. Uh, sorry, the trunk. Very clear. You're gonna find here the six uh, CD changer. That's in case if you have the uh, the original head unit, but unfortunately I changed it to put six CDs, six CDs here. So what about this car? Now the E46 was made of that era of BMW that they used to make reliable car. Like, and I mean reliable, a car that you can rely on. A car that you can drive for, I don't know, 500,000 kilometer. And all you have to do is just do the simple maintenance and changing oil and fluids. Which is not the case in this day's car. There is some issues in the car that we're gonna talk about there. Why is it so famous in racing? 
two cars, E46 and E39, uh, those cars were made in such a way that the chassis of the car was made so perfectly, I think that you don't get on a lot of cars. The weight distribution in this car is 50-50, that means 50 on the front axle, 50 on the rear axle. And for handling wise, this is heaven. <laughs> The BMW E46 come with two shapes, sedan, which is sucks, and coupe. And both of them come with the same range of engines, by the way. You have the 320, which is the worst. I don't recommend anyone to even think about having it. It's a four-cylinder 2.0 liter. It's really bad. It's like Toyota Yaris in, in the shape of BMW, so just don't, don't go there. You have the 325, which is six cylinders. From that, you started the 36, but not so good of an engine. Uh, the 25 and then you go 28 and then 30 and then m m3 the legendary e46 m3 is it a good car the m3 uh, man it's so wonderful car but this is not an m3 if it's an m3 i will be racing myself by now what we're driving right now is a 330ci uh 2001 I think mid trim because it comes with leather seat, it comes with all the controls, but it doesn't have the rooftop or sorry, the uh, what do you call it? The sunroof. And it's amazing. Why I'm saying it's amazing? Why am I so happy about it? It's a, when you get into a 20 years old car, you expect or your level of expectations becomes a bit low. You're expecting the car is falling apart, there is no options, the AC probably so loud, the engine is making such squeaky noises, the suspension is bad, blah, 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 blah. You know, 20 years old car, right? In this car, I have none of those problems. I have leather seats, uh, almost sports leather seats, not so much, but you know, almost looks like it. I have full control of the AC, automatic control of the AC. Stereo system is amazing. I only changed the head unit. Rest of the speakers and everything, the configuration of the sound system is still exactly the same. I change the hood unit, put the wires, and that's it. And it sounds crazy good. The dashboard. Uh, on this car, I have no engine lights. I have no warning lights whatsoever because I'm taking really good care of it. That's about driving it in the city. Uh, before I go to the tips and tricks of the car, there's something that I want to say. Now, a lot of people, when you ask, oh, the E46, oh man, I hate old BMWs. Why you hate old BMWs? Because it's always broken, it's always overheating, it's always blah, blah, blah. If you're taking good care of the car, and if you understand that you're driving a 20 years old car, you will be good you will be very good but the problem is that oh it's a wonderful call i'm gonna go buy it and then you buy the car you i don't know you just put some gas in it and you change all and you start driving that's not right man you have to respect the age of the car 20 years old car that's been a lot of plastic parts has already failed and unfortunately bmw at that time they chose to hold make the whole cooling system out of plastic cheap Chinese plastic I don't know why it's like at the end of manufacturing the car they run out of money just like that now it's so easy and it's not expect and it's not expensive to change it like all you have to do just once you buy the car go to a garage or whatever if you can do it yourself I'm okay with that and change the whole cooling system and I mean all of it don't just go with the radiator or with the hose and then with this and that no 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 Cooling system, that's mean radiator, radiator expansion tank, cool, uh, radiator hose, thermostat, thermostat housing, and always do the lower hoses because a lot of people just forget about it. And that is the worst, by the way. That is the one that always starts to leak first. And once it start leaking, if you don't do it while you're in the job, you're gonna have to start all over again and lift the engine because it's so at the bottom of the engine. Once you've done that, you're gonna have a really happy life. 
Why? Because you're not going to have any overheating problem. And if you never had any overheating problem, this car will be amazing with you. But once you have one overheating, just one overheating issue, the car is gone. I'm not saying that the engine is weak. The engine is bulletproof. But it's not really good with overheating. You can you can abuse the hell out of it. You can just you can race it every day, man. You can drift it every day if you want to. It will be fine with you if you keep the normal servicing and maintenance. But never ever 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 drive it without changing or at least check the cooling system. How is modification working on it? You can modify anything on it, like body modification. Man, there is that wide body modification that they start doing in an E46, especially the one that goes for drif uh, for drifts. And it's just so good, you know, it's everything that fits on it. Well, if you made a straight pipe on this car, the 330CI, if you made it a straight pipe, or you put like a sports muffler, you will have a hell of a sound. And I'm a man, I mean like a hell of a sound. Unfortunately, for some countries like here, this is illegal to have a straight pipe, so we cannot do it. And to be honest, I'm really okay because two things. First thing, you still get that exhaust noise, but not as a noise, but actually as a tone. And you get it in the low RPM, like within 1.5, maybe to 2.5, you can hear that low exhaust note. Uh, second thing, I love the sound of the engine of this car. The engine in this car, if you have a straight six BMW, you have, you know exactly what I'm talking about because all BMW straight six, if it's not terrible or supercharged, it sounds exactly the same. It have that humming sound, you know, like the the engine is not even work hard enough when you press gas. It just hums. That's, that's okay. It's like I'm cool, you know. I'm okay. I can take it. You can get me more. It sounds so good, man. Like there's no ticking noise. There's no bistems noise. It just sounds like. Maybe beautiful. Yeah, it does sound beautiful. Well, I would say it's really economic. I have no complaint. I have a four-cylinder Mazda that it takes double the gas as this. Why? Well, first, maintaining the car is one thing. If you keep the car well-maintained, servicing the car regularly, uh, having everything checked, having everything done, that will help a lot. Of keeping your engine healthy if your engine is healthy your car is healthy your tires are healthy of course you're gonna have a really good gas mileage that's number one number two the car itself when it was engineered it was made in a way that is you know economic in the consumption way it consumes more oil than gas to me though just that's one thing i have to tell you guys it's like actually like if you're gonna drive this always have one liter of oil just extra because every couple of weeks you might have to add a little bit, just a little bit, but you might have to add some. So yeah, if, if you're talking about consumption, I don't think gas is the one thing that you need to worry about. I would, I would worry about it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. This is Ahmed Salvi. Please subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment if you want me to review a specific car. If you have any question about this car or any other car that I review, leave a comment, I'll get back to you. Thank you very much.